Senator John Chafee, a Republican of Rhode Island, you'll be going to the Rio Earth Summit. You're vice chairman of the congressional delegation. What do you hope to accomplish? Well, Jim, not only will there be several conventions that will be signed there, and those in, itself, those in themselves are important, but I think the real purpose, the real thrust that will come out of this mammoth conference is an elevation to prime attention in the world as it already has on the subject of the environment, that the world's, this is an indication with over a hundred leaders, leaders of the world present at one place at one time on one subject, it means that now the environment has really moved into top priority with the host of nations across the world. How did it get to that top priority? Is it because it is in trouble? Yes, I think that's one of the, one of the, it's been, it's clearly recognized that there's a conf, the name of this conference is United Nations Conference on Environment and Development. Everybody thinks it's solely a conference on the environment, but it's much more than that. It's a conference on the environment and development. And I must say, all too frequently, there's a conflict between the two. If you have a tremendous growth in population, such as the world is seeing now, and this population needs more land to plant on, more land to grow timber on, to harvest, that means less land that's available uh, for biological diversity, for example. Less land that, that can be in the Amazon, less... Amazon jungle as it's cut down. Not just in the Amazon, it's true in the Madagascar, and it's true in the northwest part of the United States of America, where we say, oh no, forget the spotted owl, some are saying. Uh, it requires too much acreage, and it might, might cost some lumbermen some jobs. That's the conflict between development and the environment. Of course, but it's, it's not just true that it's for jobs in other parts of the, uh, parts of the world, it's just for mere survival. Uh, when in Haiti, for example, you might see that this uh, embargo that's been placed on Haiti has been an ecological disaster as people have gone out to cut down trees for, to, make, to make their firewood. And so it is across the world. Uh, in, and I think what we've, we've got to do is to get across this idea that there can be what we call sustainable development. In other words, that the earth is possible of producing enough for our society, uh, and at the same time, it doesn't have to be ravaged. We've learned a lot. One of the real problems that, that the world faces is this mammoth growing population. Uh, it, if you look at a chart and you'll see that the world took up until something like 1750 to reach a, uh, up until something like 1850 to reach a billion people. And then it took something like uh, 1950 to reach the second billion people. And then it took to 1950 to 1970 to reach the third billion. And so it goes. The, the acceleration has been just incredible, and it's continuing. Let's go to the phones. First call is from Louisiana. Where are you calling from? I'm from Natchitoches. Okay, go right ahead. Yes, sir, I just want to refer to all the... Uh globalism that we're seeing everything's referred to in, in in the whole world and all i see is is all this earth summit stuff is another way for the rest of the world to get on the welfare system you know the united states has just got to pay for everything and and i think the money's just about run out i mean everybody's kind of have to take care of themselves well the trouble is uh, what happens in the rest of the world affects us uh, we are not an island unto ourselves once upon a time it seemed that way but now uh, what happens in, in Central America, in South America, in, in Africa, as far as destruction of the green far of the uh, forest, uh, affects all of us. It affects you in Louisiana, affects me in Providence, Rhode Island. Uh, global warming and the possibility of it is, is something that is not contained to the, to the small areas where it's occurring. Let's go down to Highland City, Florida. Go right ahead. Uh, good evening, Senator. Good evening. Uh, you know, when you all passed the Clean Air Act uh, last year, thereabouts. That's right. Uh, you had a, I think it was about a $10.8 million study that was funded by Congress that was not conclusive concerning acid rain. But yet you went ahead and ignored that and passed the Clean Air Act in order to take care of the acid rain. And it appears to me that that was done for strictly political considerations. And as far as I'm concerned, uh, the entire 
environmental movement is nothing but a, a political movement. And I'm not saying that all con- environmentalists are involved with it, but I think they're following a group of people who have nothing more in mind than to control and regulate all the peoples of the earth uh, under the guise of environmental and scary, unprovable, scientific th- plans. They come out uh, plotting them on a computer that uh, predicts what it's going to be in the year 2000 when they can't tell me what the weather's going to be here next Wednesday. Uh, I think the, that if we follow this further, I think that from a historical standpoint, the Congress here will go down as uh, in history as following a very, very bad uh, path. It took a while for the administration to agree to go to this conference. Why? That's right. Well, I think that they, the president felt uh, that he was liable to be uh, sandbagged, as it were, uh, hauled into uh, publicly either agreeing to things that he didn't approve of or getting way down there and disappointing the other nations of the world by saying, no, I'm not going to sign this. And so he uh, held out that he, uh, his, the, the other nations wanted very much for the president. The United, the president, the United States is the big player. We're a big, we have 5% of the population in the world, uh, but we consume 20%, we admit 20% of the carbon dioxide in the world. So we're, we're big players. And... Uh, uh, the, the other nations felt that absent the United States, if the United States wasn't there, it really wasn't much of a conference. And the, so the president used that leverage to uh, get them to agree beforehand on what would be presented as the final documents at the conference. Go to Columbus, Ohio. You're on C-SPAN. Yes. Senator, I guess my concern with regards to um, the Clean Air Treaty, which everyone seems to be... Um, going after President Bush to sign, is that when it comes right down to the bottom line, it's the U.S. taxpayer versus the rest of the world. They want us to pay for the third world to catch up to where we are today. I think we should offer any and all assistance, but if they want the technology, they have to pay for it. The American public and the people who pay the taxes in this country shouldn't have to pay to clean up the rest of the world. We definitely need a strong conservation program, but I do not believe at this point in time that the President of the United States should sign any treaty whatsoever. I think that we've got to recognize that, uh, first of all, the United States isn't going to go it alone. And uh, I quite agree with the point you made that the United States can't be the treasurer of the rest of the world. And so uh, the, the world, however, does divide up into what you might call the developed nations and the undeveloped nations, uh, the rich and the poor. And it turns out that uh, uh, 20% of the world is what you might call rich, or relatively so, and 80% of it is poor, or relatively so, and and in many cases not just relatively so, rock bottom poor. And so we've got a situation where in in that 80% is growing. That's where the mammoth population growth is occurring, whether you're talking about India or you're talking about any, pl- any of the countries in Africa, Nigeria, or those countries, the growth in population would just boggle your mind. Uh, whereas in the European and the, and the richer countries, such as the United States, Canada, Japan, uh, the c- population is remaining relatively stable. And so as a percentage of the world's population, the rich is constantly going down as it remains stable in numbers and the rest explodes in numbers. And what are we going to do? Uh, are we concerned about the, the oceans? Are we concerned about the airs, are, are, are the air? Are we concerned about uh, uh, biological diversity where many of our best drugs come from, for example, our pharmaceutical developments come from uh, the, the plants that grow in these uh, Central American and South American countries and are being overrun with people. Now, what do we do? Do we just say, well, tough, we're rich and you're poor and we don't care? Let's go up to the Twin Cities. Minneapolis, you're on the air. It needs to be said that political forces around the world are now cooperating in unprecedented fashion to achieve their goal of uniting the people of this planet under a new world order. This new world order is not a free society. This is communism and this is socialism. 
I would like to know what the World Constitution and Parliament Association is, the WCPA. Have you heard of this organization? No, I haven't. Now, what's the name of it again? Okay, uh, we've lost that yeah. caller. Um, 